Hello again, wrestling fans, and welcome to episode 5 of WrestleDope here on WrestleDope.com, live on Justin.tv. Also, you can get that podcast at WrestleDope.Podomatic.com and iTunes, and also check out our videos on YouTube. That's YouTube.com slash The WrestleDope. Now, tonight is a huge night. It's WrestleMania 26 taking place in Arizona, and what a huge start stacked up card it is tonight yeah we're gonna have a lot a lot a lot of fun tonight it's gonna be a long one and we're gonna do the pre-wrestlemania chats and take all your questions and watch mania and then come back and take some more questions and have some more chat so it's gonna be a rock and roll and that starting off the night we're gonna speak a bit about oroh the big bang pay-per-view taking place on the 3rd of april this is going to be a great one to watch uh, for all you people who can uh, go to the internet and go to Go Fight Live and uh, get that pay-per-view for $15, an absolute steal, to see one of the best main events, I think, of the year. It's exciting me. you got that triple threat with Roderick Strong, Tyler Black and Austin Aries. Who's going to come out on top after that big main event? It, it, it's impossible to tell right now. We have our opinions and we're going to let you know what our predictions are. Uh, at times, I've been looking forward to this big bang just that little bit more than WrestleMania. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be an absolute winner of a pay-per-view uh, from the card so far. No better place than uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, if we have any listeners out there, much, muchos uh, respectos, as they would say in uh, the lower half of the other side. But um, yeah, Big Bang, check it out. We are loving the fact that the Big Bang is on at Charlotte, North Carolina. Such a great wrestling history there, and indeed such a legacy. So many uh, stars from the business uh, broke in there and made their names there. And indeed, having Ring of Honor coming back there is a huge boost for that territory's business. And indeed, hopefully, the offset will be that perhaps more independent shows will get more audiences. Sure, there's plenty out there in Charlotte right now, uh, but indeed any uh, mainstream federation coming to your city is a good thing yeah it's going to bring in uh, a lot of business uh, especially the big shows like mania and phoenix will certainly uh, see the rewards recouped i'm sure once the weekend is done um but always good to uh, to see <coughs> ring of honor delivering the goods and uh, the big bang pay-per-view Yes, indeed. The Big Bang pay-per-view, that's going to be one of our subjects tonight. But let's go straight on. We rock it onwards and discuss this week's Florida Championship Wrestling. If you're not familiar with FCW, it is, of course, WWE's developmental territory. That's where those new stars break in. Uh, A lot of uh, second-generation guys. Uh, You got the sons of the likes of, uh, well, uh, Mr. Perfect, Kurt Hennig, even Brett DiBiase. Uh, Yet another of the DBRC clan, he's working there, and certainly a few more uh, that we're going to get into in our wrap up of this week's FCW television on Bright House Sports. Yeah, a lot of second generation and some third generation stars uh, in FCW. You can see um, so many from uh, uh, what's the, the chap, Donnie Marlowe, uh, son of Haku, or Ming in his WCW days, and uh, Uso's. Uh, yeah, the list is endless. Uh, Richie Steamboat, another one who we have a bit of beef with, but uh, we'll get to that uh, just after uh, we report on the opening match. We're going to talk about Richie Steamboat later, and indeed, FCW starting off this week uh, with somebody new on commentary, certainly a familiar face, Wade Barrett from NXT. He indeed commentated on the uh, commentary desk with the Man of Sax, Byron Saxton, this week. Those two were a great combination, great back and forth, and indeed, Barrett had lots of great put-downs for Byron Saxton. It it was a fantastic uh, duo. Yeah, I thought the exact same for the whole show. They kept me entertained and uh, really reminded me of the old uh, Jesse Ventura Vince days when uh, you're the real heel uh, commentator and then the real babyface commentator. And it's something that's kind of missing because you don't really see it much anymore. TNA, Taz and Mike today seem to get on pretty fine and SmackDown's pretty safe and so is Rose. So something like that was a bit refreshing to see out of uh, all product really because Ring of Honor is pretty safe too when it comes to commentary. And brought me right back to the Jesse Ventura, Vince McMahon days and 
Um, I think the two of those would work really well up on on the main roster someday. Now, Jimmy and Jules Uso, they took on Biggie Langston and indeed Titus O'Neill. Now, I uh, just saw these Uso guys for the first time. I'm a new viewer to FCW and indeed certainly only been watching the program a few weeks. Very, very impressed uh, with the Uso guys. I thought Jimmy Uso seemed to be a kind of a hybrid of Edge and The Undertaker. He had that kind of work style, a little bit of an Edge look almost uh, i would say they could have been his influences and indeed very impressed also by titus o'neill and biggie langston yeah i think titus o'neill actually was more more impressive um hard hitter good in ring worker and uh unfortunately in the end the titus and biggie um did the job but uh, the uso boy is looking good too i like it yeah, I had to say the Usos impressed me and it's going to be interesting to see where they'll end up on the main roster. Will they end up as a pair or would they do the awful thing of uh, splitting those two guys up? I presume they're brothers. I know in wrestling, not always when they say they're brothers that they actually in fact are. But indeed, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with all four of those guys. As I say, uh, I thought uh, the Usos great. Biggie Lanston, a very big guy. Uh, certainly he's got that look that we always uh, mention but has he got what it takes to go further any further at all than Ezekiel Jackson that's another thought I had when I saw him uh, I was like well if they can't do much with someone who's a lot bigger and uh, a lot tougher looking than a uh, biggie um, then you know I, I just I don't know I just don't think but here, here is where the problem is you have if you notice on that show yeah, the the team of Jimmy and Jules Uso. I mean, they look like a tag team. Why not give them a tag team name? Obviously, tag team still suffering. And on the other side, the two other boys, uh, uh, Titus O'Neil and, and Biggie Langston, they look like they could be a legit tag team, uh, something like LAX. But you still have the team of, the team of, and it's just, ugh. But they can fix it with people like that. But I don't. they're not even aware. I don't know. It's a very valid point. From the ground up, they're not supporting tag teams. Just like you say there, they have these Uso guys that basically have that sort of coordinated look. Uh, both guys looking quite similar. And indeed, you could just call them the Usos, but WWE uh, seeming determined to keep guys as singles competitors. At least, uh, perhaps there's more money in that. We've discussed it. But indeed, uh, yes, I personally too would like to see those Usos uh, come together indeed with more of a united gimmick perhaps more coordinated movers like those young bucks yeah and uh, that's a, a tip a good example of of uh, a proper tag team and what we should see more of these days um there's not many of them left really um which is unfortunate but uh, at least ring of honor do uh put a really good effort and they've got some great tag teams and uh, tna too back to the singles division um, we saw Eli Cottonwood uh, defeating Johnny Curtis. Uh, not too fond of this Johnny Curtis jabroni. It doesn't really interest me. But uh, Eli Cottonwood now, that, um, yeah. that was interesting, I have to say. Very interesting. Cottonwood certainly dominating in the match, uh, indeed, with those blue wrestling pants. And he's a tall guy, apparently billed as being over seven foot. He certainly looks like that. Of course, never can trust those billings uh, as being 100% accurate. I wouldn't doubt it by looking at the TV, though. Uh, Eli Cottonwood, a very tall guy. Uh, just uh, don't really understand the current gimmick but i believe if they could do something with him something special do something to put him over uh i could speculate what that is but at the moment it doesn't uh, occur to me but what do you think they could do with eli yeah what uh, it's funny that you asked because i kind of i saw what i would have uh, uh not what i've liked of doing because uh if I could potentially do what I would do with him is, uh, I he kind of reminded me of. I mean, fair enough, he was pretty green. There's a lot of botched moves, and the finisher was very, very messy. But um, Wade and Mercy, if anyone remembers, that kind of a gimmick on him, uh, oh, yeah. the whole dance baby buzz, perfect. He looks like a nut job, and he's tall, being seven foot, 